You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. I'd like to share with you some ideas from a fascinating essay. Uh, The essay is called The Anti-Capitalistic Mentality, and it's by Ludwig von Mises. I'll tell you a little bit about Mises, the author, and then I'll tell you about this particular article and why I think the ideas in it are fascinating. Mises lived during the 20th century, and he was an economist, one of the greatest economists that's ever lived, in my opinion. His insights moved economic theory forward in a whole range of different ways. Um, In particular, he developed a whole new theory of the business cycle. He also was the first person to explain why centrally planned economies can't work, what the sort of fundamental flaw in, in communist economies was. He was the first person to really explain what the problem was and why communism wouldn't work. And he had a whole range of other amazing insights. As a person, he was born into the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, He was Jewish and he had to flee Europe from Nazi persecution uh, just before the Second World War. Before the Second World War, he was incredibly well known in Europe, very highly respected and uh, a very influential figure. After the Second World War in America, where he ended up, he was almost completely unknown. Uh, His ideas, particularly about free markets, were totally against the whole general spirit of the times, and he became very marginalized and was pretty much ignored when he died, although since his death his uh, ideas have kind of been rediscovered a lot, and there is an institute called the Mises Institute which publishes a lot of his work. Every time I've read his work, I've learned a huge amount about economics and philosophy and society in general, and he's one of the thinkers that I most respect. Even though I don't agree with all of his ideas, I have a huge amount of respect for him. His writing is amazingly clear and logical and rational, but it's not easy reading. It's incredibly densely packed with ideas, and it's kind of old language, not that easy to read. So what I'm trying to do um, in this episode is to pull out some of the ideas that I found really fascinating in this one article uh, and share them with you in a way that's more accessible. So what I wanted to do in this episode was share with you some of the ideas in this one essay called The Anti-Capitalistic Mentality, and particularly because this essay is very interesting for some of the topics that we talk about on The Voluntary Life all the time, in particular entrepreneurship. This is a really fascinating essay, quite a short essay uh, that Mises wrote in the 1950s, and it's available online for free. I'll put a link in the show notes. What's really interesting about the essay is that he provides his own theories as to why some people hate uh, capitalism. And really, what he's talking about is why people hate entrepreneurs. Because he makes the point in this essay that, you know, capitalism is just an abstract word. What you're really talking about if you get to the root of any of the uh, objections that people have towards capitalism, is you're talking about objections to the activities of particular people, and really those people are entrepreneurs. That's what people object to, the activities of entrepreneurs. So viewed in this light, this is a very interesting essay because it's an essay about why do people hate entrepreneurs. And Mises is not talking about the kind of crony capitalism or crony entrepreneurs who uh, benefit from lobbying the state and their friends in the state, in government. He's talking about people who just hate entrepreneurs, just regular, run-of-the-mill entrepreneurs who are ethical people who are selling in order to provide value to customers, in order to create new value in the world, to serve people by voluntarily trading with them. And Mises is talking about the negative feelings, the resentment and hatred towards entrepreneurs. And that, I think, is a very interesting subject, especially if you are an entrepreneur or if you're becoming an entrepreneur. So why would people hate entrepreneurs? Well, I'm going to share with you some of the theories that Mises puts forward in this essay, which I think are absolutely fascinating. So the first reason that Mises gives for why some people hate entrepreneurs is a general psychological reason that it is psychologically very challenging to see entrepreneurs succeed. 
And he explains this in the way that in a restricted society, in a kind of caste society or a very stratified society where you can't be an entrepreneur, then you can always blame external constraints on the limits of your own success. Whereas if you have the opportunity to be an entrepreneur, then you have the opportunity to succeed on personal merit. And he, Mises makes the point that everyone knows that they could do better for themselves and that everyone's ambition always outstrips their own achievement. The tough thing about entrepreneurship is that the possibility of entrepreneurship shows everyone other people succeeding more than they are. Because in almost every way, someone is more accomplished than you. In any measure that you could measure that on, there's somebody more accomplished than you. And that is psychologically humbling. It takes psychological strength to, to look at that and not get stuck in comparing yourself to other people who are more successful than you. And Mises has a theory that people find that so psychologically challenging that they need a scapegoat. They find it humiliating to see other people succeeding in ways that they could have succeeded themselves if they had applied themselves more. And they need an excuse for themselves for why they haven't succeeded in the way that the entrepreneur that they compare themselves against has succeeded. An excuse that takes the form of a reason why they are actually a better person than the entrepreneur and why their being a better person is actually what has prevented them from succeeding in that field. But for that excuse to work, uh, they have to denigrate the entrepreneur as being a worse person and say that the entrepreneur is someone who perpetrates all sorts of dastardly deeds. So the entrepreneur becomes a scapegoat as part of their own excuse that prevents them from feeling humiliated by their lack of accomplishment. And so they come up with a theory that say entrepreneurs only succeed because they're evil and dishonest. And I may not be as successful as that person, but that's because I'm a good person. I'm too good to succeed in business. I don't have the uh, viciousness and uh, dishonesty to elbow my way forward in the way that all those entrepreneurs did. I failed in business because I'm too good a person and I didn't do the evil things that uh, these, these uh, dastardly entrepreneurs do. So that, that then becomes an overall theory of entrepreneurs that they are all uh, these evil guys who are totally dishonest and only get where they're, where they're going because they have been willing enough to be ruthless and exploit people and so on and so forth. I'm sure you can imagine the narrative from there. And Mises goes on to explain that you know, this is a resentment against people who have succeeded more in life, but that some people are more sophisticated in the way that they express this resentment. And here's a, here's a quote from Mises. He says, The more sophisticated do not indulge in personal calumny. They sublimate their hatred into a philosophy, the philosophy of anti-capitalism, in order to render inaudible the inner voice that tells them that their failure is entirely their own fault. Their fanaticism in defending their critique of capitalism is precisely due to the fact that they are fighting their own awareness of its falsity. So this is Mises' scapegoat theory, that you know, what you're seeing in resentment towards entrepreneurs is envy, basically, and a resentment towards people who are showing through their actions that it is possible to uh, achieve things that the resentful person hasn't achieved and needs a, an excuse for themselves, basically, as to why they haven't achieved that. And so they take their excuse out on the entrepreneurs that they see being successful. Now, of course, it is true that there are some entrepreneurs in business who do unethical, evil things in order to make a profit. And things that come to mind for me are things like people who are in banking and especially closely involved with central banking, who are able to create money from nothing, uh, which is actually something that if anybody else did would be considered to be uh, counterfeiting and would be illegal, whereas banks are able to do that uh, because of their close relationship to central banks and because they are given a special legal status uh, different from everyone else. That's one example. Another example is the military-industrial complex who earn their money from government taxes and they provide weapons that are used to kill people in war and make money from governments who, who give them that money. So there's that. There's also people who use the state and use things like intellectual property law to prevent others from competing uh, with them 
I've done uh, previous episodes on why I think intellectual property law is unjustifiable and not the same as normal normal property. Those kind of examples are things that are examples of people who are in business and who are unethical and who are doing unethical things. But this scapegoat theory uh, that Mises is talking about is not about people hating just a specific group of entrepreneurs. The resentment that Mises is talking about is applied to all entrepreneurs and all entrepreneurs are tarred with the same brush of being, you know, ruthless, uh, evil people, according to this way of thinking and for people who hold these views about entrepreneurs and business. This resentment and hatred doesn't just apply to those entrepreneurs in who are in central banking or who are in the military industrial complex or using IP law. It applies to all successful entrepreneurs. That's the theory that, that Mises is putting forward. And the explanation for the resentment underneath it is this idea about needing a scapegoat for lack of achievement. The other general idea that Mises puts forward as to why people hate and resent entrepreneurs is that people take the achievements of entrepreneurs for granted. People think that material improvement just happens automatically and that you know, our material well-being just keeps getting better because history kind of moves forward somehow and these things just appear. Machines just kind of, I don't know, propagate new goods and services for us automatically over time. They don't understand how much of all of our standard of living it owes to entrepreneurs. And Mises explains in the essay that everything that we have in terms of our civilization, our quality of life, our material possessions, our standard of living, all comes from three progressive activities. It comes from capital accumulation or saving. It comes from technical innovation, development of, of new technology. And most of all, it comes from entrepreneurship, which brings the saving and the technological innovation together and applies it in actually creating new value for people. And Mises is making the argument in this essay that people have a willful ignorance of economics. They willfully ignore how much of our civilization owes to the activity of entrepreneurs. And that allows them uh, effectively to basically take them for granted and to, to take out their resentments on them. So those are some of the general arguments that Mises makes about why people resent or hate entrepreneurs. But he also makes some more specific arguments about why certain groups tend to uh, resent or hate entrepreneurs much more than others. And he links the resentment of people in these particular groups to their circumstances and their experiences and, and explains how these different groups come to have these ideas. And his, those ideas are absolutely fascinating. But I'm going to leave it here for this episode and I will tell you about those groups in a part two. I hope you found that interesting and don't forget to check out my book, Becoming an Entrepreneur. It's available in ebook and paperback and you can find it on Amazon and you can also find it through the website thevoluntarylife.com. Just click on the tab marked books. If you enjoyed this, then please consider supporting the show. You can donate at the site thevoluntarylife.com and you can also leave me a review on iTunes. That is always a big help. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.